Hello and welcome to Design Patterns. Today we are going to talk about the singleton. A singleton, some hate it, some love it. Let's talk about it. So the purpose of a singleton is that we only want to allow one instance of an object at any time of our application. This can look like this. So uh, the singleton has a static instance and as we know static means that it's only uh, that it will only be uh, that it will be available globally in our application and that, that only one instance can be stored in this variable therefore if we only use this one instance this static instance we solve this problem so how can we achieve this um, if we implement a singleton like this that we have a private constructor so no uh, client can create our object but we have a get instance method which returns exactly this instance which is a static variable we also have to um, avoid that this instance gets copied but the reference copy is uh, reference copy uh, reference is okay So, okay, so what is the context? We want to create only one instance. So we uh, want to ensure that in the whole application only one instance of an object is alive at the same time. How can we do this? First, what are the forces? So there must be exactly one instance and it must be accessible by all clients from a well-known access point. So they have somehow get access to this instance. Um, when we want to inherit from this instance, we want to use it without having to change our clients. The solution is to hide firstly hide the constructor and uh, the copy the assignment operator of a class so to do to make it protected or private then we have to add a static factory method which returns the static instance which is stored in a static member and consequent callings of this factory method should only return the already created instance. So um, here we can decide if we immediately create it at the first usage or at the first usage or uh, when the program is started up. Okay, what I already mentioned, uh, we have to avoid uh, prohibit deep copying of the object. So the assignment operator has to somehow be hidden too. So what are the consequences when we use this? We have a controlled access to a sole instance. For example, we could also provide multiple instances. For example, in a thread pool that we have five threads and only these can be used and no other thread should be created. It reduces the namespace. So um, we don't have a constructor for every uh, object it permits that we can refine the, the class which we want to have a singleton because some um, so if we if you seal the object if you make the object itself static it cannot be derived anymore so subclassing is possible uh, this I also already mentioned, so it permits a variable number of instances and it's more flexible than static class operations. Because of course I could make the whole class static, but then I, um, yeah, the programming languages don't allow as many options as I have with normal, normal um, class definitions. How could a singleton look like? This is .NET and the .NET we have uh, the fortunate instance that if we create our singleton instance like this, so in a, in a static variable, it happens atomically. 
So the compiler ensures that this only happens once in our whole application. Then we have this protect single constructor, so nobody outside the class can call it. And we have our get instance method, which, which returns exactly the instance which was created before. So the instance method and the instance member variable are static. So in our main function, when we use the singleton, you can see we have created two variables. And um, as we implemented it, only one instance is behind these variables. Of course, I can have an arbitrary number of references to this instance, but it's always the same instance. And I cannot create a singleton without, uh, or I cannot create another instance of this singleton. So for the older ones of you who, who know old 80s movies, think of an Highlander, there can only be one. Thank you.